one of the um, you know quite top people in the PDC said to me, "Well, it's not even a thing, is it?" You know, uh, but it is a thing, isn't it? But it's just not been classified. That's the problem. This is Alexandra Palace, home of the PDC Darts World Championship where darts and dreams are made. But with dartitis, your dreams can quickly become a darting nightmare. I'm travelling down to London to speak with Dr Linda Duffy, Associate Professor of Psychology at Middlesex University. Dr Duffy has studied dartitis for well over a decade and is a leading expert on the condition, having done plenty of research and published articles about the subject. Sometimes it's been around a bit of old chalk like that. Right, what should we put up here? We'll put a like 180, so we put 3, 2, 1. Yeah. Yeah. I just define it in a breakdown of the movement that you need to be able to, you know, execute the dart throw. So that comes in lots of different guises because dart throws are different, but uh, it's just a breakdown in that ability to be able to throw a dart at a target or even throw a dart anywhere actually. Players, some players have claimed that they've overcome it and <coughs> I have no reason not to believe them. You know, they, they find a way to play again um, and very successfully. I mean, there are some high profile players. I mean, Mensur Silovic is one, um, Barry Van Peer. The uh, Dutch lad is another, and then there are others as well, um, who have, have had it quite badly, uh, but managed to, to overcome it or learnt to play with it. I think they have, both have little sort of idiosyncrasies with their throws now and their fingers and things they do to sort of set themselves to be able to throw. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's the end if you get dartitis, I think it just makes life very difficult. One of the players who has suffered with dartitis and learned to be successful with it is team darting sensation Bo Greaves. The 19-year-old has already lifted the Women's World Championship and Women's World Match Play and I travelled to a local in Doncaster to find out more about her battles with the condition. Bo, thank you for joining me. So I just want to talk a little bit about dartitis and you, it's something that you've, you've struggled with before. Mm -hmm. Um, at what point did you get dartitis or did you feel like something's not quite right here with my throw? Yeah, I was just playing um, in a, a normal match at one of the women's series when it first started and then I got put on the stream and before I even got to the stream I was dreading it, like I didn't, didn't want to be there, I didn't want to be in the room, I just wanted to go home and then I got on there, I think I lost 4-0 and then I came off and I said to my dad, I was like, something ain't right here. Anyway, went back, went back home, finished the day off, and then um, practicing one day, and I literally just stuttered, and then it lit, that one stutter went into over a year of just pure pain, <laughs> basically, and uh, yeah, just um, yeah, not a very good time for me. So you say that you can, even now that you can feel it happening. So mm -hmm. is it something that's not completely gone away for you then? No, I don't think it ever will. And I think that's something I had to accept when I first got it. I was like, right, if I'm going to sort of get back on track here and get to a decent standard again, then I've just got to accept it for what it is. And uh, to be fair, I've done quite well with it. I, I know people who've had it and they can't even talk about it, they can't hear the word, and but I've never been too bothered about that. I just, it is what it is. I've got it, it's not a secret anymore. You know, everyone seen me struggle with it. And um, yeah, it's just, it's hard to accept, but I think once you get over that, then that's the first sort of like road to recovery type thing. So when you first got dartitis, how how did that impact you mentally when, when you were thinking, you know, what, what, what if I can never throw again? What if I can, can't mm. do what I love again? Yeah, obviously it was hard. You know, I'd played darts from 10. I think I got it when I was 16 and then I went into 17. But yeah, at that moment, you, you're thinking, what am I gonna do? This is my life, this is my job now. You know, I left school, played darts, and then this happened and it all sort of came crashing down for me. But yeah, it was hard, do you know what I mean? It proper got to me, it proper like affected me. But uh, to be fair, I've had such a got such a good family in that, so I'd, I just had to um 
pick messing up again, but it's not um, it's not easy to do. And do you know, when I see people struggling with it now, like, I proper feel for them, and I'd, I'm always happy to help people and talk to them. But yeah, it's um, I won't be shot on anyone. <laughs> I feel like I'm doomed. The game I love to play that used to be so easy to do, all of a sudden I can't even throw a dart. And everybody says that Eric Bristow was a, you know, a very sort of confident, outgoing, you know, larger than life character. But actually, a lot of that was like a Muhammad Ali type of confidence. So it was there just for the opponents and just for the crowd. Um, he wasn't actually that confident a person deep down when you got to know him well. Sixty-six. Darts was his life, apart from his children who he adored. Um, but it, it was his life, it's all he lived for, and you know, he, he feared that he would never be able to play it again properly. And actually, he, he never had that same throw again. So was there a certain point when you first started playing where you thought, yeah, I'm not, I'm not half bad at this thing, I'm quite good. Um, I have no idea. Like, I always had a good throw. Like, when I was younger, I just had a really straight and natural throw. Um, and then I just sort of like, I think it's just more, the more comps you go to, the more people you meet, the more people tell you, oh, you're good, you should do this, you do this, and then eventually you get recognised and you do like interviews and stuff and people obviously want to talk to you and, Eventually, you realise you're not half bad. Oh, I can't miss this thing. So when, when you were struggling with diartitis, how, how did it affect how you threw? Yeah, so basically, like, um, when it was quite bad, sort of, um, we stood behind my opponent, whoever it was, and then um, I'd sort of, like, get about here. And I'd just wait a bit and um, try and prepare myself um, for whatever could happen. And then I'd sort of get here and then I'd just sort of wait a bit and mess about and pretend I was doing something when I wasn't. Um, and then I'd bring it up and then and I just wouldn't be able to like... And I could only do this and I'd have to do this for at least ten times until I could eventually just throw it. Or I'd sort of like, um, didn't want to do that and then I'd just be stuck here, like in this one point, until I like, threw my body at it. Or I would think, well, who cares anyway, and try and throw it and then beta could just go like that. And I'd be, and I wouldn't be threatened, I'd be, sometimes it could be really bad and I'd be doing this and then I'd be like halfway, so I'd have to turn around and, and, and walk back in front of everyone. Um, or sometimes I'd just give up and try and lob it anywhere and not, not bothered about where it is. But yeah, I did that for forever, it felt like. I played somewhere once, I think it took me eight minutes to let go three darts. And eight minutes is a long time when you stood it in the same spot <laughs> trying to do something you can't do. And it's so stupid because there's no, there's no problem, there's no up with me throwing, there's nothing wrong for me here to hear, it's just up here, that gets me bad, but um, it's really strange, just can't, um, can't put my finger on it like, but. So, I mean, now, as we watch you throw now, I mean, it seems pretty, pretty seamless throw, so what, how did you sort of get, get to the point where you could still be successful and throw like this? Um. I had a, I did a lot of practicing on one throw. When I, I was struggling with it bad, I, I had I, I couldn't remember how to throw. I think all the time just stood here and not doing it. And then at some points I was literally just chucking them all over the shop just to get them out of my hand. So I went back. Um, I just had a load of practice sessions with 
my trend and um, eventually it sort of just fizzled out the more I practiced getting up here and just throwing a dart first time was what sort of got me out of it but it doesn't mean that it's gone forever it's just it's like it's on a break do you know what I mean well I'm not saying it will come back but I would just like to make me set aware that if it came back I'm not going to be shocked do you know what I just sort of get on with it again but I sort of know what to do what to do with it now when I I'm struggling but it's weird because I could be struggling one game and then I could come off the board and go on practice board and I ain't got a problem it's all just about who's watching me or whoever I'm playing or if I don't want to get beat like just stuff like that all adds to it and it just makes it worse I wouldn't say that there's, you know, there's one factor that can cause dietitis, but what we have found with all the research we've done so far is that the, um, the most salient single factor um, for people with dietitis is a very low confidence, which obviously you would say you know, that, that that would be an obvious finding, but we found also that their confidence was low before the onset of dietitis. So it wasn't that they got dietitis and then they felt very, you know, low in confidence, which you, know, you would do. It's, uh, it's a lack of confidence before can sort of predisposition someone to developing dietitis. One day it just happened. I think it may, may be just too much pressure on myself and overthinking stuff and I just couldn't. One day I'm completely fine and one day I'm not. It just some, some, some things you just can't explain and that's one of them. Yeah. Uh, if you're somebody's out there watching this with that either, either they've, they've got it or they think something's not quite right here, is there any advice that you give to people mm -hmm. to maybe help them cope with it, knowing that you know someone who's as successful as you also has this, but you know, still battles on with it? Yeah, it's one of them, I think. It's, I think it's not it's not the end of the world, do you know what I mean? Like when I first got it I was thinking, God, what am I gonna do now? Um but the more you throw throw with it and then it comes and goes, you know, you just gotta take it for what it is, do you know what I mean? Don't let it stop you playing because then it's beat you really. Try anything. That's what I did. I I went I went to see a psychologist and all that and therapy. I've had I've had it all and it just comes down to you and how strong you are when you get on board. I just get them to try and look at what they're doing from a different perspective. So if they were feeling too much pressure around, you know, performing, say going to play a match, you know, if you're talking about just, you know, regular dart players. So it's not just professional players that get it, you know, regular dart players in the pub can get it as well. So you would, um, you would, uh, you know, chat to them about why, um, why they feel anxious, what, why they're worried about expectations. A lot of it is about letting you know, not letting people down, not letting their families, sponsors down, for example. Um, and if you're talking about people in the pub, it's not letting their teammates down. It's if you're the best, you know, player in the pub. There's an expectation that comes with that. It's not just Michael Van Gerwen and Peter Wright and Gerwin Price and all these players that have pressure on them. You have pressure at all levels of sport. So um, you would just try and get to the bottom of that and then get them to reframe it, think about it in a different way. You know, what is going to happen to them if they go out and play a match and they lose? You know, nothing. I don't think it's the end if you get dartitis. I think it just makes life very difficult. Brilliant, bro. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Thanks Thank a lot. You. No worries. Shall I turn this? Do you want this on still on? Uh